everybody. Uh, this is Board and Experimental. I'm sorry. I know that I told everybody be coming back like six months ago, but I had a project and a really good friend of mine asked me to live stream this. So instead of my normal content, we are sorting a type of fancy roly-poly called Armadillidia maculatum or zebra isopods. And we're going to go into the genetics of this. So let me see. I think we have two people on here. Are you guys, everybody on here? Okay. Sorry. I, so this is working. So a big thing here is, so I have my culture of zebras, I guess you, I'll show you guys better, but what we started with was in September, I got a mixed batch of zebra, or not zebra, they're all zebras, they're not mixed zebras, they are zebras that are mixed with yellow zebras and chocolate zebras. Actually, I do have the adults separated right now, and I will tell you why. So I got these in September. These were from cultures of, like, pure breeding cultures of chocolates and yellows. This is an important part of why this is going to work. Because we have to know the genetics of the parents for our Punnett square to figure out what to do with the babies. Let me see. This is a chocolate zebra isopod. It's kind of more of a brown color. We will move these guys into their real home soon. I'm sorry, buddy. And we have yellows which they have the black stripes, but the white is replaced with the yellow. Come on. These ones have not eaten all their leaves yet. That is good. I feel kind of bad for the chocolates there. This one has yellow and it's got almost kind of a Dalmatian pattern, so this might be something I'll be looking at with my yellow culture first, but right now I need to get the yellow culture going. So why do I have the adults separated if I'm trying to, if I had them mixed? I had them mixed because my goal is to get a chocolate and yellow striped ro roly-poly, so I had to mix them together to interbreed them see. Yes, I really like both the chocolates and the yellows, which was a problem because I mixed them together to get yellow chocolates. You can't get yellow chocolates if you keep your yellows and your chocolates separate. But then that means I would end up with a culture of lots of mixed roly-polies, and I could get yellow chocolates eventually and pull those out, but then I would have lost the ability to have the yellow culture and chocolate culture. So the thing is, what we need, I needed to act quickly with the first generation crosses. So what I did was I had these together until January, from, from September until January 3rd, crossing and having babies because it takes a little while for roly polies to start having babies in a new bin. So we gave them a couple months, and then the critical thing was before the babies are old enough to breed, I need to separate them. Another thing is these, like, the gestation period of a roly poly is one month, which meant one month after I separated the adults, they could still be having crossbred babies. So that's why I put them into these travel containers. And I feel bad. But now, 
It's been over a month. All the pregnant roly polies have had their babies. It's actually been a month and a half. I wanted to be as cautious as I could be. So now we start with, we know, like these adults are from pure breeding cultures and they have been separated for long enough that I can put them into their bins. Now the thing is, the the very brand new manka or baby roly polies in this uh, bin here could still be mixed. We know who the mothers are, but we don't know who the fathers are. I don't watch my roly polies that closely. So we need to be careful. Ah, only to put the adult roly polies from here until the babies get old enough that we can see their colors. The main group of babies we'll be sorting today has gone old enough for that, but not these ones. So I'm going to have to take care of them until they get old enough to see their colors. So we have, I have a bin bin for the yellows as well. There we go, I did not knock you guys over. So the adult yellows will go into there. Now, the, ah, the yellows are going to be more complicated because a wild type vulgar baby can look the same as a yellow vulgar baby. Now, why am I talking? Ooh, this one. This one is one I want to keep an eye on because this, where is the camera? Okay. This one is very much a Dalmatian. And I really love, so I'm going to have to look at and try to sort out Dalmatians once the yellows are established. Come on. And we're failing. Okay, I'll just put you in the dirt and hopefully you can write yourself. And we have one more yellow. I'm sorry, I know you've been writing stuff. I'm gonna have to look and read. I wish I could be more res responsive and I'm trying very hard not to hurt these little ones. So now we have the adults out of those little boxes. I know that moving very, so the question is, is there a time that's too early or bad to move them? I want to be careful about moving them too early. Like, fortunately, these ones are too small to get their colors. So, like, if you don't have, if they don't have their colors in, obviously you can't really sort them. Yeah, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference between these and the springtails right now. Like, I'm just going to let those chill for a little bit, and I kind of feel bad because I want to get pods out of these travel containers. Oh, and we have another one in here. Okay. I would say once you can tell the colors, that is good. You want to be careful and not let the babies reach a quarter of their size. Honestly, like none of these babies are at that point, but some of them I'm getting nervous about. So I definitely want to Move these manka today. I just wanted to make sure everybody had time, that the adults had time away from each other, that the manka could grow up a bit because I just don't really want to squish them. Hello, Kun! How long to exhibit traits? So, 
I separate the adults January 3rd. So no more, so there were no adults in this container. So no new baby manka since January 3rd. Some of, I want to say that now a month and a half later, they all have, well, they all have their stripes. So some of them I'm going to have to be careful about, are they just, lighter wild types or are they chocolates? I've also noticed that I'm just barely getting yellow looking stripes out of any of them. So this is something I'm going to have to be careful of. Though there's also the any possible yellows are still suspect until they're far older. I want to separate them from the others so they're not interbreeding. But they will be under suspect, and I'm going to have to be checking frequently to make sure that they're not wild types that are yellow juvenile, because there's a difference between a yellow maculatum isopod that stays yellow its entire life and wild types that appear yellow when they're young and then stop being yellow. So this is, but fortunately, the chocolates, they show their chocolate traits really early, so I will be able to move the chocolates straight into their bin. The yellows, we're going to have to move into their, the, the bin with the manka, which are too young. But hopefully we'll get to the point where we'll have mostly wild type in here to continue the yellow chocolate breeding experiment. Now with that... Now, why does this work? How, like, why am I saying that this can be a yellow culture and this can be a chocolate culture even though I mix them like mixing roly-polies is a something that we have to be careful of in the, uh, the isopod community and we have to be very certain that we know what we have is what we have science I may be a little like I am a bioed major I am Certified to teach genetics, like take that however you will, but we start with our Punnett squares. So we have, this is why I said that knowing the genetics of the parents that they're from pure true breeding strains. Okay, this isn't working. Let me just take my oil pastel because I was dumb and didn't have markers. But Punnett square is something that Mendel used to figure out genetics in the first place. And it's very good at determining what the babies will look like depending on what the parents are. So this way I can look at these babies and tell you who the parents are and whether or not they're pure or not. So we just start with a crawl with our box. So we have... Looking at these babies, we have chocolate babies, we have yellow looking babies, and we have wild types. The fact that we have wild types proves that none of these traits I'm working with right now are dominant traits. They are recessive, which means you have to have two copies of the trait to show. Because if either of them were dominant, there would be no wild types because all of the babies from that parent would either be chocolate or yellow, depending on which one was dominant. So we know that our chocolate parents have the chocolate trait. And so that means they can only, okay, I am doing this wrong. I can teach genetics and I can do it and I'm doing it wrong. You only have one trait, but the, but the parents are C, C for chocolate, which means Every baby will, from the crossings, will be pure chocolates, and so they're going to look brown. So this is if both parents are chocolates. Now if, for our yellows, we, this is a, 
pure, the, the yellows came from a pure breeding strain. So we know that the adults only have the yellow gene because they show it and you have to have two trick copies of it to be yellow, which means all the babies will be pure yellows. Now we only have to worry about safeguarding against wild types that appear yellow when young. Ah. Sorry, speed drawing. What we're looking what I'm looking for for the yellow chocolates, which is why we mix them together in the first place, though, are roly polies where we have one chocolate parent and one yellow parent, which means like the chocolate ones don't have the yellow gene and the yellows don't have the chocolate gene. And so we will have one copy of chocolate, one copy of yellow for every single baby. The problem here is this doesn't produce a yellow chocolate because you need two cho two C's and two yellows in each of these boxes to be either chocolate or yellow. So we're going to have babies with black stripes and white stripes because we can't turn it chocolate or yellow with just one C and one yellow in this box, which means all the chocolates are going to be pure, from pure chocolate parents. All the yellows, assuming they're not wild type fakers, which is why I'm going to have to separate them in a sec second quarantine. All the yellows are pure yellow. All of these, all the wild types will have one copy of one gene and one copy of the other. So they will look normal even though they're not. So this only works with the first generation of uh, parents from pure yellow and pure chocolate lines. If you had a box of mixed chocolate and yellows for like a year, you would have no clue if the chocolates had one copy of yellow or something. So this is why I had to separate them a couple months, like right after we had fresh babies, and then keep the parents separated to try to make sure that we have the genes se segregated like this. I'm sorry, this is probably confusing. It's I'm certified to teach, but it's been a long time since I have tried that. But yeah, let me double check. Yeah, sometimes they look just a bit yellow. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just like, here's my drawing pad. I will draw things. Now let me try to get some lighting because I don't want a little bit of yellow lighting to be influencing things. How do I sort my boxes? Okay, hopefully I don't blind you guys. That'll make it easier for me to sort out my roly polies. Are you guys okay? Did I blind you all? <laughs> now, hopefully I'm not blinding the roly polies. But now we have my bin of manka, which have been, these are all born the last year. So they're at least a month old. The chocolates can be put directly in here. The yellows will have to go into the bin of 
brand new yellow manka that I'll have to check later to see if they're still yellow. We still have the bin of brand new chocolate manka, which I'll have to check to see whether or not they're yellow or wild type. I also have a few other containers here because I know I at least have lava runaways in here and I want to catch those, put them with the lavas, assuming that there's no other skavers here. If there's any other skavers, I will have to put them in my lotto mix. Let me see. Um, okay, how to get these off without hurting them. You see, I am a thought through professional. I have a notepad and don't know how to get the roly polies. <laughs> Come on. So all have to come eventually. I find it interesting that they liked the stick more than the wood. The stick also has some char on it. I wonder if that had anything to do with it? Come on. Okay, make sure that there's no roly pulleys here and then try tapping it. Don't let that one get out. Watch as I am doing a terrible job. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Maybe I should just try to pick them one by one out of the container instead of doing that. Come on. This is how not to sort your roly polies, people, in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> Okay, everybody's alive, though some of them are on their backs. But, oh, I do not have everybody. This is why you should not do what I'm doing. Okay, now we have everybody, and I'm not going to do that again. But let me see how to do this without cutting off the light. We have some which are dark, some which are lighter, some of them which are like weird, like dark backs with light sides. I wonder if those are some weird phase of a... I don't know what those are, but yeah. Okay, this is a problem. Come on. Stop crawling out of your lid. Okay, I need to get these guys sorted fast. You. Now, I've also heard that there's dark chocolates and I wonder if that's what the sides are, but I'm just gonna put those back as possible wild types for now. Okay, I may just have to put all of these back. I kind of feel bad doing so, but I can't even grip these well. But yeah, I think that's like the excitement. For today, I am now going to be sorting roly polies, so I don't know how boring that's going to be. I'll try to keep look over at the chat and talk to you guys occasionally.
but I am now, yeah, let me look over. You heard the term champagne and not sure what those are. I, I have heard multiple descriptions of champagne, which makes things kind of confusing. I've heard that champagne is chocolate with the high white gene. I have some very clear chocolates here. You can definitely tell if they're chocolate way before you can tell whether or not they are yellows. Who are you? I've noticed that every, like there's some really small ones that I've been able to identify as chocolates, but all the ones that I think are possible yellows are usually the larger ones I have. Oh, here's one that looks like a yellow Dalmatian. Yeah, I need to figure out what to do because I'd like to separate Dalmatians too, but right now, like, I've noticed that all of my yellows that I got are kind of broken. I don't have good stripes on any of them. So I'll probably need to work on just getting yellows going first. And then getting... Okay, that is definitely, now all of these possible yellows are still very hard to tell the yellow, so I'm pretty sure that, actually no, those aren't possible yellows. I'm sure I've seen one that's looked yellow before. <laughs> but I don't know where it is. But yeah. I've heard that there's lighter chocolates, darker chocolates. All the adult chocolates that I had were about the same hue. But I do have babies with different colors. So I don't know how much of this is just the manka have different shades, which is something I have to be careful about that I don't accidentally put wild types in. So I'm pretty sure I can tell the difference between the chocolates, like the light chocolates and the yellows. And the yellows are gonna be in their own bin. Yeah. I have, oh, this one is interesting. This, can I, okay, let's, how do I get so you guys can see it? Where are you? Did I just, oh, there it is. But it's like albino, or I don't know, maybe it just molted. I am going to put it in one of my extra boxes for now. I'm going to have to change it up. But like, I don't have any albino armodilidiums right now. Like, I'll later have albino vulgares, but I don't have anything that could be mistaken for it right now. It could just be molted, but it's like a very, very light color. I'm gonna put it away. And here's another adult. The adults were obviously Burrowing. Because I keep on getting them even though I took them all out. I am so glad that they're going to be in their bigger enclosures now.
Nice. I'm glad you noticed it. Like I'm like sitting here with my roly polies and I don't know if you can see any of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't have whiteouts. So I guess I do have Nazatum peaches. And true, I guess I need to be careful not to let this one dry out, but it's like, it's got stripes, but very, very light stripes. Ah, and here is our lava. It's... Let me see. The problem with my lighting. But yeah, this is a scaber. It's a flat roly-poly. And I'm putting it in its own thing, separate from the white one. Because I've seen multiple lavas in here. I was just like, since I'm going to be going through them all, like I grabbed any I could, but I wasn't ripping apart the enclosure until was, here's another one. So it was time to rip apart the enclosure. Where did I put it? Okay, I should have. The labels for which was where, because now I can't remember which one was which. Okay, this is the lava thing. This is either going to be lava or just scaber, depending on. Whether or not I find any other types of scavers, because I do have multiple scavers and we do not want any other scaver genetics risking getting into a pure lava bin. And here's a third lava. This has gone from sorting zebras to catching lava. This is why you should be careful which bins you put next to each other. Okay, let's... They really don't like this wood. Sometimes there's a lot of them on there, but not today. Something sets stuff up. Okay, good luck studying. Yeah, I went and I set out a bunch of stuff up beforehand, but this is turning into an interesting thing. I will say I'm probably going to have to go over these quite a bit after the stream. And there's a really tiny baby. I wonder if it crawled out. Of the bins. Let's try this corner. There's another lava. Four lavas so far. Another a reason why it was very important to get those moved or else they would have been competing, breeding and competing. With these guys, and I don't know which one would win. The lavas already have their own bin. Did not intend for that to be a rhyme, but it worked just in time. Yeah, I'm
catching chocolates, but I'm not seeing very many yellows, and I'm kind of confused. I think that the yellow really develops later, and you have to check to make sure whether or not it stays or not. Oh, here is another Dalm Dalmatian one. So this one, like, oh my goodness, this one isn't, but almost looks like my clowns, and you cannot see it well. I am sorry. I am definitely going to have to... Let me see, can I move the lighting at all? I'll just move this bin, since we're not putting anything else in it right now. And hopefully, we can now move a little better closer to the light. Yeah. Yeah, an interesting thing I see is I have a lot more chocolate babies than ones that could be even possibly yellow. I do know I have more chocolate females than yellow females. So you'd think that would mean we'd have more chocolate females mixing. With the yellow males, I don't know. But you'd think from the pine squares that I showed you earlier, or actually the pine square doesn't show anything. But you'd think that there would be be more wild types. I wonder if this shows that the roly poly is like segregating themselves by a color. I'd have to do a different experiment with. Okay, this one definitely showing yellow. You get to go in there. It will be interesting looking at the babies that are in this adult segregation bins, looking at them in a month or so. Okay, you are definitely a chocolate. Oh no, my little white one is on its back. Get on your feet. I want you to do well. I'm trying to figure out what to do with that one. I guess it really depends to see how it molts out. Maybe I'll put with some of my lighter ones. Maybe, I don't know. Would it be better to play with a lighter one or a wild type? I will have to see what it looks like. And maybe it's just a molting chocolate and then it'll go in the chocolate bins. Yeah, if you started out with all chocolate males and all yellow females, I think it'll help. It's like the seller I worked with did try to help by trying to have mostly chocolate females and yellow males, though since we had babies in the segregation bins, I guess... Since there are segregation bins, it doesn't prove I have males and females of both, but sorting out the roly polies is difficult. 
I'm pretty sure I don't have them pure. And either way, like with the babies here, there's another lava. Lava number five. It's like some of them have funky hues to them, but I think it's just manka coloration. Some of them are definitely Dalmatians and they're usually the ones which look the brightest yellow. So I might just be having a yellow Dalmatian crew. Yeah. See. No. No escaping. And there's one thing, like, I really like the Costco croissant boxes. True. I've been finding that I need to figure out what to do with my shelving because these only stack so high before you lose structural integrity. I'm starting to get floppy bins. Like, they're not letting the isopods out, but they're not holding the bins above them well either. And I don't want to push it till they're starting to fall and letting the isopods out. Kind of a thing, you just don't let your isopods out. Yeah, so Dalmatian is the term for, like this is a term like that a lot of people use. It's not just me, you have to be careful with terminology of isopods, especially with The zebras? Oh, you're a yellow. Come on. But Dalmatian is for those with just the spots on their back. High white is for larger stripes. Well, you know more about high white than I do. No. I need to figure out, I would say that as far as too early with roly polies, you have to be very careful with anything smaller than these. That is helpful. See, you're definitely a wild type. And I'm glad to see that I'm definitely getting wild types because that is very important for the whole premise of this as I've explained earlier. But there are some of the large ones that are definitely not turning yellow at all, even though they're pretty large, like that one. And lava number six. I need to check on those lavas. What are they up to? Though I guess if having an invasive roly poly, the lavas aren't the worst. Like invasive as in the bins. You don't want these to go outside and become invasive outside, no matter what kind they are. But yeah. So like zebras, let's find a good one. Oh, you're a good example. Zebras, they normally have, like they're called zebras because of the normal patterning, which is really, Okay, I'm not going to be able to show it to you guys, but the zebras have stripes. Some of them have spots on their back, which is Dalmatian. That's what we're talking about. I think I've already explained that, so I am sorry. 
Here's another very light one. This is very interesting. And yeah, I don't have any whiteouts or glaciers or albinos of any, like the closest I have are Dalmatian skeevers. And a skeever is a flat, one of the flat types of roly polies. Well, these are rounded. So it's definitely not that. I'm very glad that I did this before grabbing albino vulgares. Because then I would have to question whether it was one of those. Those could just be freshly molded individuals, in which point I am sorry, friends, little roly polies. But I will definitely need to keep you guys updated on those ones. Far from that, I'm looking through trying to find anything exciting. I think that a lot of this I'm going to have to... Oh, you're odd. We got one with a little head. It's a chocolate. But yeah, it's just a roly poly with a really tiny head. And I don't think you can see it well. I will put it with the chocolates. Yeah, I think for the rest of this, I'm gonna have to like, get to a point where I can get a better angle and better lighting on this to really sort through these really well. I'm can't find anything else that would be really exciting to show you guys aside from nitpicking roly-polies for a couple hours. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah, I have I'm not streaming on other platforms yet. I am this person who tries to do internet things, but I'm not very good with the internet, which turns into why this channel has been so intermittent and not doing so well. I need to get better at figuring out how to make better quality videos and actually making the videos. I have a script for a video from like seven months ago and now it's like super outdated. I'm trying to decide whether or not I'll just do it and post it up anyway, or change it, or just what, but yeah. I am not the best at uploading at certain specific times, or at all lately. I don't have any other platforms right now. I should get better at this one before I do others, but yeah, like... Like, thank you for the offer, and if uh, you do any plat other platforms, please let me know. Yeah, I think that is basically it. I've got my two enclosures. I'll be adding chocolates as I find my chocolates. These guys have the adults yellows, which right now it'll just be really good for them to have extra foot room. I want to really get a better place for our light zebras really quickly before they dry out, especially if they're just molted. That means they would dry out faster, so I should go and attend to them soon. But thank you, and I hope that I was able to answer questions. What other questions were you answering? Oh, I was... You were talking about... Like, where, how I was streaming and stuff, so I was just talking about... I don't stream anywhere else, and this... It's not as reliable as it should be, but yeah, I'm on YouTube when I'm on, and I'm often 
absent. <laughs> But this is one of the things I've been doing in the past five months when I've been missing from YouTube. I've been gaining armies of roly polies with varying colors. And you are a chocolate. But yeah. Uh, this is how I anti celebrate Valentine's Day. I now have a box of chocolates. Hope you're having. Yeah, lighting is. Polite, specific photos and such. Nice, I'm glad you're getting new light because lighting is very difficult. As you can see, I do not do it well. I am really excited to see your stuff. Dragons, Nine Realms. Oh my goodness! So, uh, Nine Realms is uh, is released for a fifth season. I was starting to give up on it. <coughs> like I still need to do my commentary on seasons three and four. I went back, and my very last video was saying that the trailer for season three was up. And I'm like, oh my goodness. That, and I had a whole script for a thing about talking about the implications of feather hides in Rise of Burke and looking at Roman depictions of animals to talk about the... Um, rate of evolution and trying to apply that to Nine Realms versus How to Train Your Dragon, but now there's like, let's see, there's the Plowhorn, there's um, the Mist Twister, there's, um, oh, I'm blanking on his name, but the new Legendary, that's from Nine Realms too, so there's so many dragons, I'm like, should I keep that presentation, should I not? They discovered a new realm. Oh my goodness, I am going to have to look at this trailer pretty soon. Thank you for letting me know. I have been looking for information on season five and assumed that just was never going to happen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry, my sopods. I kind of got to, like, yeah, I do really quickly like especially since yeah i'm a channel that randomly does anything but <laughs> okay i guess i know another th what my next video is gonna be thank you and yeah i think this is as far as i can go right now i really want to get to a better angle and better lighting to really sort these out well because I don't want to accidentally put the wrong one in the wrong box but thank you everybody but yeah I say like thank you everybody for coming to this live stream I think this is like the first true live stream I've done and this is definitely a learning experience don't try to dump all the roly polies in the lid. It doesn't work well. <laughs> Who is your favorite character in Dragons the Nine Realms? Ooh, um. Well, obviously, they, like, for the long time, it was hands down Alex. Right now, it's getting close to Eugene, which is weird because I hated him. Okay, I'm at 2% battery, so I might be dying on you guys pretty quick. But Eugene, Alex, Fave Dragon? I'm going to have to look, up, look at it again. Like, I really like the Elder Nightlight. Tom is good. Yes, Tom is good. Just Alex has the sass. And I really like how Eugene has, he's willing to talk to both sides and try to help smooth things over for both of them. 
yes, he's he like his side is the dragon riders, but how he works with the buzzsaw when he's not endangering his friends, I really like that. But yeah, I am very nearly out of battery. I need to. Uh, close this up. Tom and June. I am... I'm pretty sure that the show is trying to get us to ship Tom with June and Eugene with Alex. I want to see Tom and June mature a little bit more first. Like, they, they both, like, still feel like they're trying to find themselves a little bit more. Like, Eugene needs to get, sort out his ego, but at least he and Alex know what they're trying to do. And, uh, like, something about being willing to sass, uh, sass other people and stuff up, up shows uh, that they're, like, you have to be careful of that care. Uh, a lot but you also I I feel like Tom and June could work well but not right now so I'm hesitant about shipping them I want to see what will happen in the next couple seasons if that makes any sense <laughs> but yeah I am surprised my computer hasn't died yet. I am going to end the stream before it does. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Thank you so much for suggesting that I do this live stream and that I try to come back to YouTube. I, Yeah, the last time I made a promise about coming back, we saw how that was. I'm not making any promises, but I'm thinking I'm just going to make videos when I feel like there's something to do a video about and not stress myself into oblivion again. Thank you about the trailer. I am going to have a look at it. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye.